We have all heard of Republic of Gamers, ROG laptops at some point of time in the last decade. From the water-cooled GX700 to bulky desktop replacements like the G703 to thin pieces of art like the Zephyrus, the ROG lineup has catered to the needs of gamers with laptops of all shapes and sizes, with flashy accents and gamer aesthetics. But now ASUS seems to be taking a somewhat different approach, targeting the stealthy gamers amongst us who want all the goodies minus the flashy attire with the tough series. Has ASUS done enough to make the tough series stand out? Let's find out. This is Sandeep from Brave Atlas and this is the review of the ASUS Tough Gaming FX505 GM laptop. The build quality of the FX505 is above average. The entire body of the laptop is constructed of hardened plastic with the exception of the outer lid which seems to have metal in use. We did find some flex to it which might be there to make it more shock resistant and to make matters confusing there was an evident flex on the keyboard deck as well which was visible when we typed even the slightest pressure on the keyboard. This gave us a feeling as if our unit lacked any sort of reinforced metal plate beneath the keyboard deck. The hinge on the other hand had a solid feel with almost no wobble and allows the display to open up to 145 degrees. Asus claims that the laptop comes with MIL 810G certification which means that the laptop can handle day-to-day -day abuse without breaking a sweat. We don't want to verify the claim by drop testing it, but overall the chassis felt solid enough to make us feel confident that the claims are real. What really took us by surprise were the bezels or lack thereof at just 6.5mm on the sides. The bezels are quite thin and the top bezel is slightly thicker since it houses the webcam but there's a huge chain on the bottom which in our opinion could have been used to house a larger 16 to 10 display but it's not something that we're really complaining about. Talking about the display, the FX505 has a 15.6 inch 144Hz IPS LCD display that's made by LG Philips. It gets decently bright and can be used outdoors but not under direct sunlight. The colors are vivid on the 8-bit panel but the black levels didn't seem satisfactory and had a slight greyish look to it at higher brightness levels. Using the display indoors for playing fast-paced games is a treat, but avid movie buffs should look elsewhere as the movie experience felt quite lacking. The good thing is that ASUS has incorporated an auto-refresh rate switching which limits the refresh rate to 60Hz when on battery and unleashes the 144Hz goodness when on AC power. This setting can be overridden though if you wish. The FX505 has a standard keyboard layout with sort of cramped numpad and arrow keys. What irked us was the huge control key in exchange for cramped arrow keys. Not sure why ASUS took this approach. Other than that, the typing experience was pleasant and not much to complain about the keystrokes, but more so the keyboard deck flex is to be blamed here. The keyboard has RGB illumination which can be customized using the Aura software, which offers colors, effects, and brightness controls. Coming to a touchpad is small, which in the case of most gaming laptops, but the tracking is good thanks to Windows Precision drivers and we found it satisfactory for a gaming laptop. All the ports on the FX505 are placed on the right side of the laptop which includes a USB 2.0 port, two USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A ports, one HDMI 2.0 port, 3.5mm combo jack, RG45 Ethernet port, except for the Kensington lock which is on the left side. The port situation here is missing a USB Type-C port, SD card reader, Thunderbolt 3, USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports which is disappointing but we do laud ASUS for including full-size USB ports which are disappearing from laptops with each passing year. In terms of wireless connectivity, you get an Intel Wireless AC9560 module with integrated Bluetooth 5.0 support. ASUS promises 1.7 Gbps of maximum Wi-Fi transfer suites. When it comes to upgradability, the FX505 scores well. There are two sodium slots present on the motherboard with only one populated out of the box so you can add another 16GB stick and enjoy full 32GB of RAM for all the 4K rendering and heavy computational work that you might need to perform on this beast. The M2 slot supports NVMe so you can upgrade your SSD down the line. The hard disk can be upgraded or replaced with another 2.5D SATA SSD and also the Wi-Fi card can be replaced. Not that you'd want to do it anytime soon though. All in all, it's a good package if you're looking to upgrade components to keep the machine future-proof. The FX5 lacks any sort of biometric unlock option. There's no fingerprint scanner or Windows Hello integration, which makes the situation here look dated as you have to enter your PIN or password every time you need to unlock the device. Asus could have included a fingerprint scanner here as well as there's ample amount of space for it and as they have done on some other ZenBook devices. The speakers on the FX505 sound average at best, but they're not very loud lack any sort of bass or low end on the sound output and sound tinny at times. You're better off using the FX505 with a good pair of headphones as the DAC on this thing is really capable enough to drive high impedance headphones. There's also support for high res audio via the 3.5mm jack and the DTS headphone X surround might come in handy during gameplay if you have large headphones since it does offer quite a bit of surround sound experience at the cost of slight loss in overall quality. 
Performance is the area where the FX505 managed to surprise us the most. We were expecting good performance, but the FX505 managed to outdo our expectations. The i7-8750H is able to stay way above its base clock when stressed. It was able to maintain a solid 4GHz boost frequency during single-threaded workload and a respectable 3GHz when all 12 threads were stressed to run at full 100% workload. It was able to score 1200 plus on Cinebench R15 multi-core benchmark, which is on par with the likes of a desktop Ryzen 5 1600X and only 15% lower than a desktop Core i7-8700 Nord K. Now it might seem unfair to compare a laptop to a desktop CPU, so in comparison the i5-8300H, i7-8565U, the 8750 is almost 50% faster and 100% faster comparatively. Coming to single-threaded performance, which is what will get most gamers excited, the FX505 scored an XLN 175 points, which pushes the i7-8750H 7% ahead of the desktop Ryzen 5 5600X and on par with the Ryzen 5 2600X, but is still 13% lower than the desktop i7-8700. On the laptop CPU end, its score was similar to the i5-8300H and 3% better than an i7-8565U, which is impressive for a laptop. We also ran a Blender Ryzen logo test at 150 samples preset and it took the laptop only 37 seconds to render a full 80% faster than the i7-8565U that we tested on the ZenBook 14. That puts it on par with the desktop i5-8400 and 20% and 25% slower than the desktop Ryzen 5600X and 2600X respectively. We also ran Blender BMW render tests, Geekbench 4 and WinRAW compression and decompression tests. Enough with the CPU, let's talk about the GTX 1060 now. It was able to maintain a solid boost clock speed above 1650 MHz most of the time and scored 10750 on 3D Mark Firestrike DX11 benchmark. This is respectable for a GTX 1060 and it also scored 3523 on the 3D Mark Time Spy DX12 benchmark and all in all it never felt like the GTX 1060 was bottleneck in any form. The FX505 comes with a Western Digital made NVMe SSD and it had a respectable sequential read write speed of 1700 and 750 plus Mbps. Overall system performance was good too as you can see in the PC Mark 10 test that we ran. The system ran fluidly thanks to a powerful CPU, GPU, NVMe SSD and ample amounts of RAM without any hiccup even during long hours of stress testing. Speaking of stress tests, the thermals never went above 80 degrees Celsius on stressing the CPU alone and maintained an average temperature of 76 degrees Celsius. But when gaming, the temperatures went above 19 degrees Celsius since the GPU was pushed, but the laptop didn't get too hot to touch. Perhaps this is the result of the heat pipe design ASUS choose to go with when connecting the CPU and GPU together. Undervolting the CPU might help lower the temperature a bit, but don't expect huge gains. Gaming is the absolute strong suit of the FX505 and you can expect 144 plus FPS on first person shooter games such as Counter Strike Go. Running at very high graphics setting at 1080p resolution, we got a maximum of 285 frames per second, while the average frame rate hovered around 183 FPS with a minimum of 106 on CSGO. More demanding and recent titles such as Shadow of Tomb Raider, but on the graphics side to high instead of ultra, where games managed to maintain an average of 51 FPS during the in-game benchmark, with a minimum frame rate of 40 and a maximum of 73 FPS. But during the gameplay, the average frame rate is slightly higher with average of 60 FPS and minimum staying above 50 FPS and max around 84 FPS. The hardware is ideal for 1080p gaming and we were hard pressed to find any flaws in the performance other than the occasional spike thermals which ramped up the fans to a very high audible level during very heavy GPU workload, the gaming performance was overall still very satisfactory. Battery life on gaming laptops is generally lackluster and same is the case here during our testing. The laptop lasted us no more than 4 hours 15 minutes on an average, with the screen set to 50% brightness and refresh rate at 60Hz. The workload was mainly web browsing and media consumption. If you want good battery life, then we'll recommend you look elsewhere, as the 48Wh battery on this laptop can't keep up with the beastly hardware underneath. The FX505 GM comes with a 180W power brick, which charges the laptop to full under 1 hour 45 minutes from zero. Apart from ASUS Hello Warranty Registration, ASUS Aura Control Center, and the McAfee Antivirus, the Windows installation on the FX505 was pretty clean, which is how most systems should come out of the box. We did have to update the system, and specifically the graphics driver to get most performance out of the laptop, which was fairly easy, so no complaints there. 
To conclude, the FX505 is a performance champion, but at the current asking price of 1.1 lakhs, it's a tough recommendation in our books, specifically with its glaring issues with the keyboard deck flex, small battery, average display in terms of brightness contrast, lack of important ports and below average speakers. But we'll suggest that you get one of these if available under 90k for the i7-1060 variant. Thanks for watching, we are working to bring more PC and laptop stuff so till then do share this video and get subscribed to our channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, see you again in the next one.